Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back to another video in this series. This is going to be a short video, but a useful one on nuclei configuration. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. We'll start with the current problem that we face while configuring nuclei with all the flags and switches. And then the second part would be the solution to this problem. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. So as usual, this video is timestamped. You can jump to any section you want. Feel free to skip rewatch sections as you like. And also all the mentioned links will be available down in the description. All right, let's get started. So let's talk about the problem. So far in our journey in the series, we've been exploring quite a bit of flags or switches, which we specify to nuclei and it would actually go ahead and do what it's supposed to do. But clearly, it's a bit of a hassle writing all these flags every single time you want to run a command. Wouldn't it be great if we could just write all those flags once and just reuse them? Because I go on Twitter and I see a lot of people coming up with pretty cool ideas or use cases for nuclei and other project discovery tools, but they usually default to writing those uh, complex commands into bash functions that they can invoke anytime. That's nice. But there's a nicer way with configuration files where you can just list all the flags or switches you want and then specify this configuration file when you run nuclei. It's a lot more cleaner and maintainable in the long run than a typical bash function. So that's our solution to the problem, a configuration file. Nuclei supports YAML based configuration. So just like templates, which are also YAML based files, I know I haven't gotten into writing templates yet. It's going to be cool. I promise it's coming pretty soon. But hey, just remember, config files and also templates are all YAML based. So let's uh, put this to a test, shall we? Let's say I've got this command. Uh, looks pretty daunting, I know. But let's actually break this down real quick. Well, first of all, we have the uh, template condition, which uses the DSL or the domain specific language to filter templates, which are tagged as CVE and SSRF. I've covered this in the um, filtering video. Go check it out if you haven't watched it. But there's this new header flag, which we haven't seen before. Actually, it's part of the nuclei configuration section. But essentially, this allows you to specify custom headers in our scans. And here, it's using some type of custom authentication header. And then there's more configuration flags, like follow redirects, which literally follows HTTP redirects. And also there's this threshold for maximum redirections, and that's set to 10. Pretty cool. Then there's the verbose switch for detailed output. And finally, all the requests and responses are being persisted with the store responses flag. Well, that's a lot of flags. It's pretty big and messy, and I don't want to write it all the time if I'm using it often. So let's go ahead and translate this into a config file. Let's start by creating a new file named config.yaml. We'll copy the entire command there, and we're going to translate it line by line. So first of all, we've got a template condition. If we look at the help screen for this switch, nuclei-h, we grep for template condition, we can see that it accepts an array of strings or a list of strings. So we can use YAML sequences for representing any type of uh, a list or arrays of anything like so. Similarly, we do the same thing for the header because that's also a list of strings. One can specify one or more headers in a scan. So that makes sense. We're going to use YAML sequences again. Great. The uh, follow redirects, however, is a boolean. If we check out the help screen, it says nothing, which means it's a boolean. It's a switch you include or you don't. So it's either going to be true or false. And in our case, we want to follow redirects, so it's going to be true. Now, the max redirects, if you look at the help screen again, it's an integer. So it's just going to be a number 10. And finally, just like follow redirects, we have verbose and store responses flags, which are also booleans. Alrighty, we've got our config file now. All I have to do is specify this config file with the dash config option. 
and finally we put our target in there and we run the scan. So I waited a bit for the uh, scan to complete, it's done, and there's our output. A W E S O M A. Awesome. <laughs> so now if you want to run the same command against other targets, you could without actually writing the command line flags all over again, because just use this config file. That's pretty neat. Additionally, there's a config file that gets loaded by default, and it's in .config nuclei in config.yaml. This is a default configuration file that gets loaded regardless. And if I open that up, you can see everything is commented out. You can uncomment specific things that you'd like to have in your scan and Nuclei would actually use this configuration by default. So remember that this is a union. That means if you already have some uh, default configuration set up in this file and on top of that, you'll try to use your own custom uh, config file, the Nuclei will use configuration found in both of those files. So it's pretty much a union. All right. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you learned uh, a thing or two and uh, yeah, have fun. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.